Hello friends, Tara here, but you can call me T Pow. This week, I'm gonna be showing you 10 different ideas for astrological bullet journal spreads. Now, if you watched my 2021 bullet journal setup, these first two spreads might look familiar to you because I am using the same footage, but you'll definitely forgive me for this after you see how much work I put into them. This first spread is all about moon journaling. Last year, I became interested in moon journaling and I've been doing it for seven months now. So when the new year came around, I knew I wanted to have a spread where I could see all of the themes that relate to each moon phase as it relates to moon journaling at a quick glance so every month when I do my moon journaling I have one page where I can see all of this information at one time. If you're not familiar with moon journaling, it's basically just journaling along with the phases of the moon. The only difference is that you kind of focus what you talk about based on which phase of the moon we're currently in. So for example, a new moon represents new beginnings and it's a good time to manifest goals and desires. And then during a full moon is a time to reflect on the past and let go of things that might be holding you back or bothering you. So in this spread you can see each phase has a different theme or a different focus for moon journaling. I've also included all of the full moon names for each month. There's actually four or five names for each moon so that might differ slightly depending on which list you use. This next spread is the reason I'm reusing this footage. In my 2021 setup I mentioned that this spread took the most research, the most planning, and the most time to set up of I think any spread that I've ever created in my bullet journal. And this is my lunar calendar and it includes all the moon phases and celestial events such as eclipses or equinoxes, all of that good stuff. I used my circle maker to make 56 circles for each lunar event and then at the bottom I created a key so that I could make symbols to represent each lunar phase and celestial event and then I used various Tombow Duo brush pens as well as my uni ball metallic pen that I'm always talking about these days because I'm kind of obsessed with it to fill it out and color it in and overall I think it looks so good I'm so obsessed with it I look at it all the time although this is a time consuming spread to make if you wanted to take the time to make it you would only have to do this once a year because the calendar covers the entire year also the information is really easy to look up and it's really easy to look up far in advance because the moon and all of these different events are very cyclical so it's very easy to look up this information for the following year and sometimes even for years after that. So if you wanted to recreate this you could come up with your own symbols for different celestial events. You could even include more celestial events that I didn't even include. You can change up the color scheme. There's a lot of ways to customize this while keeping it the same general format which worked really well for me. For those of you who are new to my channel I actually moved my bullet journal into a binder this year instead of using a bound notebook. When I would do that, I used to run out of pages at least by June or July. So I usually stayed away from really time consuming or complicated spreads such as this one because I knew that I would not be able to use it once we got to June or July and I knew that it wouldn't be worth recreating halfway through the year. But now that I have a bullet journal and a binder, not only am I motivated to make spreads like this that I only have to make like once a year, I'm also motivated to make spreads that I can make one time and never have to make again, like the moon journaling spread and a lot of other spreads that are to come in this video. The next three spreads are basically quick reference guides to various areas of astrology. Houses, planets and aspects. These all come to play when you start looking at birth charts. So if you want to start reading and interpreting those things on your own, it's good to have these guides handy. There are 12 houses in astrology and each one is represented by a different zodiac sign. You'll often see the houses represented as a circle divided into 12 sections, so that's how I'm displaying it here. My circle maker came in handy here because not only was I able to draw a perfect circle, 
I was also able to perfectly divide that circle into 12 even sections. You'll see that I use this a lot in this video. It is one of my most essential tools at this point. The first house begins between what would be eight and nine o'clock on a regular analog clock and moves around counterclockwise all the way to 12. You'll notice throughout this video and throughout astrology, if you look into it, that the zodiac always begins with Aries and ends with Pisces. Even though this doesn't really go with our Gregorian calendar, which begins with Capricorn. And how these houses are used in astrology is when a planet is within a certain house, it energizes and lights up that part of your life. So for example, the first house, which is ruled by Aries, has everything to do with the self. It's your appearance, it's first impressions, it's your attitude, it's your approach to life. Also as the first house, it represents new beginnings. And in your birth chart, whichever sign is on the cusp of this first house between the 12th and first houses is called your rising sign or your ascendant. But we'll talk more about that later in the video. While this isn't a very visually appealing spread, it is a super useful one when it comes to analyzing your own astrology or the astrology of others. This next spread is all about the planets as they relate to astrology. Now I realize by scientific definition, the sun and the moon are not considered planets. However, in astrology, they function the same. So again, this spread is meant to be a quick reference about the pertinent information you might need to know about planets when dealing with astrology. And in astrology, each planet symbolizes something in our lives and rules over a different part of our psyche, different things that create who we are. So when dealing with planets in astrology, what you want to know is how long it takes for them to transit between signs, what sign they rule over, and what parts of your personality they are associated with. And because there are only 10 significant planets in astrology, two of the planets rule two signs each. So for example, the first one is the sun, which transits between signs about once a month, which is why each zodiac sign lasts roughly a month. It rules over Leo and it determines your ego, your basic personality, your consciousness, your vitality, and your stamina. Makes perfect sense. When most of us learn about astrology for the first time, the first thing we do is look up our zodiac sign, which is technically our sun sign, and it tells us something about our personality. I'm not gonna go through every single planet, but I do wanna touch on a couple things. The moon actually moves through zodiac signs every two to three days, but it affects our emotions, our habits, and our moods. And if you wanted to, you could actually change your habits to fit the sign that the moon is in and I will be showing you a spread about that later in the video. The planet that has the longest transit is Pluto and it transits every 12 to 15 years between signs. It rules over Scorpio and it deals with transformation, power, death, rebirth, and evolution. So already you can see how these things start to work together. If you see that a planet has moved into a certain house, you can see what area of your life is going to be activated and what part of your psyche will be affected regarding that part of your life. This third reference spread has to do with aspects. Honestly, this is the part of astrology that I understand the least, but I still wanted to include it so that as I learn more, I will have the reference for it. It also took a long time to create because I had to create 10 little circles and divide them all into 12 sections because that's how I wanted to represent it visually. If you were going to do this, there are plenty of other ways to represent this information, but I just wanted to do it the way that I always see it represented when I look this stuff up. So aspects aren't that hard to understand what they are. It's basically the angle at which various points in an astrology chart such as planets or signs are in relationship to each other. So for example, if two planets are about 90 degrees away from each other, it's called a square. If two planets are on complete opposite sides of the chart at 180 degrees, we call that an opposition. And depending on what aspect these planets or points in the chart are in relation to each other, it has a different significance. If they're in conjunction or at zero degrees, they're working together. If they're in opposition, 180 degrees, they're fighting basically. So again, I'm not the person to come to for the full understanding of this, 
I'm just creating a bullet journal spread to reference. This next spread is where it starts to get fun and it starts to get personal. All of the zodiac signs and their traits. So obviously with the signs, there's so much information you can look into and I encourage you to look up information about your own sun sign and maybe your partner's sun sign or like your best friend's sun sign. But this is meant to be like another quick reference to some pertinent information that's relevant to each sign. So for the example, I'm just gonna show you one. So I've chosen Aries, the first sign. So I have the symbol for Aries. Aries is the ram. So you can kind of see the horns of a ram within the symbol. I have the dates that the sun moves through Aries. So if your birth date is within those dates, you are an Aries sun sign. And I realized while editing that I wrote the wrong planet for Aries. I wrote the sun and it should have been Mars. So just ignore that. Each sign is associated with a certain element fire air earth or water in this case it is fire so i have the symbol for fire next i have what is called the signs modality which can be cardinal fixed or mutable cardinal signs are assertive fixed signs are very grounded and steady and mutable signs are flexible and adaptable aries happens to be a cardinal sign as we know from the houses spread Aries rules the first house, which deals with the self and the body. And then I've just written some strengths of those with an Aries sun sign. They're brave, direct, independent, and also some weaknesses. They can be aggressive, selfish, and pushy. Again, we are only scratching the surface and there are so many other traits and things that you can associate with each sign. But if you just meet somebody and you want to get to know what you might be in for, you can turn to your spread and see a few keywords that might represent that person. This next spread is something I'm so excited to have permanently in my bullet journal, and that is my birth chart. Last year, I did a video reviewing the Magic of Eye Astrological Planner, and in that video, I was able to map out my birth chart. And even though I could rip out the page and put it in my bullet journal, it just wouldn't match the rest of my bullet journal. So for an accurate birth chart, you need to know the date, the time, and the location you were born. I will link a site in the description that maps your birth chart for you as long as you have those three pieces of information. And then using my circle maker, I'm drawing four concentric circles, and then I'm dividing that circle into 12 equal sections for, you guessed it, the 12 houses. As always, the first house is between eight and nine o'clock, so I started there and then moved counterclockwise. And then around the outside, I'm going to write the sign associated with each house, which in my case begins with Virgo. Now, this might be a little confusing because I said that the first house is ruled by Aries multiple times, but that is going to shift based on when you're born and it will still go in order. It'll go Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and so on, but it's going to start with a different sign based on when you were born. And then I'm just gonna go through and mark where all the planets and other celestial bodies were at the time of my birth. So for example, the sun was in Taurus. My sun sign is Taurus and the moon was in Scorpio, which makes me a Scorpio moon. And I decided to include a key with the birth chart because there are some symbols within the birth chart besides planets. For example, there's the North Node, there's the Ascendant, there's the Midheaven, and I just wanted to have a quick glance at what those things are. Now you could go even further and mark all of the various aspects of your chart, but then it will have a million lines on it and it'll look like this and it's going to be really hard to understand especially if you're new to this so i don't recommend doing that because all of that information is easily found on the internet as long as you know the date time and location of your birth you can always look it up i think it's better to just have the planets and those other points of interest this next spread is the three main aspects of your birth chart that most people care about which is your sun moon and rising signs these three aspects of your birth chart are what truly make up your entire personality while your sun sign alone can give you a pretty good idea of your personality it really takes all three of these combined to get the full picture. So for each sign, I'm including pretty much the same information that I included in the zodiac spread. 
I have the symbol, the modality, the planet it's ruled by, and the element, as well as some strengths and weaknesses. These will be the same for all the sun signs, but they are going to be different for the moon and the rising signs. So if you're going to recreate this, and let's say you're a Gemini moon, make sure you look up a Gemini moon's traits and not just a Gemini's traits because it's going to be different. Like I said before, the sun sign is the one that most people are familiar with. Almost everybody that you talk to knows their zodiac sign and what they're really referring to is their sun sign. Most people don't even know that they have a moon sign or a rising sign until they look up a birth chart. They might not even know what a birth chart is. And our sun sign is our identity. It's how you experience life. It's how you express your individuality. I've also heard that if you express the qualities of your sun sign, you feel more fulfilled and confident. The moon sign is what's behind your identity. It's kind of like what you keep hidden. It's your deepest desires, it's your emotions, but understanding your moon sign can give you insight on how to nurture yourself. And finally, we have the ascendant, which is also known as the rising sign. The rising sign is kind of what you outwardly project into the world. It's kind of like a mask or a facade. And if you met someone for the first time and they tried to guess your sign based on their first impression of you, they're more likely to guess your rising sign than your actual sun sign because it's kind of the act we put on for others before we let them get to know us. And so you see, you really need all three to make up the full picture of an individual's personality. Next, we have reached our penultimate spread. I recently learned what that word means and I try to work it in wherever possible. And that is our moon sign themes. While I don't think this spread is very practical in our modern day world, I do find it very interesting and that's why I chose to include it. Now, full disclosure, I'm taking this information directly out of my moon journal which I talked about in my stationary haul last month. So if you remember from our planet's spread, the moon transits between signs every two to three days, and the moon affects our habits and our moods. And each sign that the moon moves through has a different type of energy. So if you wanted to, you could use the energy of each moon sign to plan out your day. So if the moon is in Aries, you should take action, make decisions, start projects, and be a leader because that's the energy of Aries. But when the moon moves through Cancer, it's the opposite. You should stay home, take care of yourself, reflect on your emotions, cook for some reason. <laughs> Obviously, for those of us with jobs and other responsibilities, we can't exactly follow this, which is why I said it's not super practical, but if you worked from home and made your own hours, you could totally follow this and be in tune with the moon. So whether or not I actually use this information, I just find it really interesting. Finally, we have reached the last spread, which I didn't really know what to call it, so I'm calling it the monthly astrology breakdown. All the other spreads in this video only have to be made once or at most once a year. This is the only one that if you wanted to include this in your bullet journal, you could make it monthly. Not gonna lie, this was inspired by the Magic of Eye astrological planner that I mentioned earlier in the video. And this is very similar to what they have in the beginning of each month, but it doesn't have all the same information because I don't know where to find and how to verify the information. But what I have included is what sign the sun is in. So for example, this month it was in Capricorn until the 19th when it moved into Aquarius. Next, I included the four main phases of the moon that I use for moon journaling purposes. So I have the first quarter, the new moon, the last quarter, and the full moon in the order that they appear in the month. Of course, I was able to get this information from my lunar calendar. So it's almost like the lunar calendar is the same as your future log in your bullet journal, but just for the moon. If there were any notable celestial events like an eclipse or a super new moon or something like that, I would have included those, but there were none for the month of January. At the bottom, I included a little mini calendar for the month of January, and this is where I'm going to write down what sign the moon is in every day. But as I mentioned, the moon moves very quickly and it moves through signs every two to three days. So almost every other or every third day 
contains two signs that the moon is actually in. So this is kind of a crazy looking calendar when it's finished, but if you wanted to live your life by the moon, like I talked about in the last spread, this would help you do that. But from a more practical perspective, it can help you understand like why you might be feeling a certain way that you don't really understand. The moon is said to affect our moods. So for example, some people report feeling more tired and relaxed when the moon is in Taurus, and some people feel they have a more positive outlook on the world when the moon is in Gemini. And then lastly, I wrote down the monthly themes based on the sun signs, so Capricorn and Aquarius. Capricorn represents structure, career, and goals, and Aquarius represents hope and progress, and I got this information from my moon journal. And now it's time for the final flip through. As you can see, I kept these spreads very clean, very plain, didn't add too much decoration because I just wanted to show you the information you would need if you wanna recreate these. And then of course, if you do recreate these, you can jazz them up, add doodles, go crazy.